So today we're taking a look at one of the oldest ships in the entire game, and that's the Gearing. And it's still one of the better destroyers in the game, in my opinion. Uh, it really is carried by these torpedoes. Um, they have received buffs over the years. They used to have a longer reload. Now they're quite, uh, quite fast on the cooldown, actually, for what they are. Um, you get really good damage out of them. Not the best, but really good. You get really, really nice range. Um, I believe it's 16.5. Um, and then also, the the great thing is you get 10 of them. You know, you're not stuck with 8 or something like that. So these, these torps are very, very flexible. They're nice as zoning torps, like what I'm doing here. I'm guessing that the destroyer is going to be in the cap at some point. Um, also, these are mainly for the Azuma and the Palmer, and possibly. You can torp really, really far away. And the goal is always to, do, to line up... Um, multiple targets, right? Multi-purpose torps. I'm sure you've heard that before. And we happen to get the, uh, <laughs> the kid there. Um, that was lucky, obviously. Um, those torps were definitely meant for the Azuma, but it is nice that if you know generally where destroyers are going to be contesting the capture zone from, you can send torps that way and uh, get some pretty solid results out of it. Um, Obviously, I'm not running RPF, so it's harder for me to do that. Uh, something you could do if you wanted to do that kind of torping more is just run RPF, and then you know where the enemy destroyer is and kind of just torp in his general direction. That's pretty powerful. But I'm running a very torpedo-focused build here. I'm trying to get the reload down as much as possible. I've also increased the speed on these torps as much as possible, too. So they're, I think, 72 or 73 knots. We can look at that later. Um, but this is a very, very good destroyer. Uh, you're great at contesting caps, you're great at torping things, you're great at stopping pushes. That's what destroyers really are all about, is stopping pushes on the enemy team. And fortunately for us, that's what the enemy team is going to try and do here, is push. Um, and that's scary when they have a DD that knows what they're doing. So the decision making here is we're trying to get as wide as possible, because these people eventually are going to have to turn north into A. Um, so getting onto their flank is always going to be a good thing. And, you know, torping around corners is generally going to be the best way to go about things. The nice other thing about the gearing is you have basically a two-minute smokescreen. Uh, you, you have the best smokescreens in the game as far as uh, duration goes. So if people do push into you and you have teammates spotting for you, you can just smoke up and start shooting with these guns. Now, the guns aren't amazing at close range or at longer ranges just because the arcs. But they do some pretty good damage, they have okay fire chance, and the reload is pretty nice. Um, these are pretty solid guns. You can do a full gun build gearing, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You may as well go play something like a Daring or a Grozovoy if you're looking for the gun build playstyle. It's not quite as good as those two ships anymore. It used to be an insanely good gunboat DD when uh, when there was smoke fire or sorry, stealth firing in the game still. Uh, you had like about a kilometer and a half window with the gearing where uh, your ship would not get detected um, by shooting. So the gun range is 11.1. .1. I think if you fired your guns, it was around 10, a little less than that, kilometers where your ship would get detected. So you had that little window where you could be shooting and spotting someone and they couldn't spot you. Um, it was a really dumb mechanic, but uh, it certainly made the gearing a very strong uh, strong ship. Here I should be running away more. Um, this guy's obviously got Hydro, it's a Pomeran. Uh, I don't know why I thought he had a 5 or 5.5 kilometer Hydro, so I thought I had a little bit more time. Um, but regardless, gearing can get away from these situations reasonably well, especially now that Battleship AP pens are no longer a thing. Uh, that was one of the biggest uh, weaknesses about the gearing in the past is you had this unfortunate case where the destroyer is so thick that AP shells from battleships often just stuck in the ship and so doing what I'm doing here was often a death sentence where you would angle completely away from a battleship you would usually take 10 to 15 K damage uh, from a couple shells from a battleship that's no longer the case it's far easier to play uh, a gearing these days than it was in the past for that reason alone. It's 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 really nice actually playing destroyers these days. There's hard, far, far less to worry about. The only massive alpha strikes you have to worry about are basically Venezia and the odd uh, the odd um, rocket plane strike, that kind of thing. 
So here is an interesting thing where I'm shooting out in the open, but nobody's spotting me. And that's because the Pomeran's behind my smoke screen, and there's nobody within 11 kilometers of me. Um, I took the risk, obviously. There could have been something here. But uh, I think it was worth trying to shoot here. Um, getting these small windows where you can shoot for free is really important in a daring. Or, sorry, a gearing. Daring as well. But uh, it's, it's something you can do a lot of the time when you have such short-range guns. Because... Nobody's really going to spot you from these longer ranges. That Irian can't spot me because my guns don't reach that far. It's kind of a reason to not take AFT or whatever the new skill is called that boosts your range. Um, it's pretty nice. And so there you go. A gearing can stop a push in its like just so quickly. It's crazy how good gearing is at stopping pushes. The torps reload so quickly and they do a lot of damage and uh, they're very long range. So you can do predictive... Well, not necessarily predictive torps, but more zoning torps. Um, we're expecting a bunch of ships to be spotted out on the flank here. This is often something that people do, is they go to the flank on this map to start with. They'll either go there, or they'll go to the uh, island on G6-7-ish area. Um, but a lot of times people will go to the, to the flank to start with, at least, to get that open water spotting and all that stuff. We have two destroyers here. The Yugumo has better concealment than me, so that's why I'm kind of letting him go slightly ahead of me. Um, so we'll get a little bit of advanced warning. Um, now, we do end up spotting the Otland here, so a good play for me is actually to smoke up. Because he doesn't have a smoke, and I have a destroyer spotting from here. Uh, we get a little bit lucky with the torpedo spread that he sent. Uh, those were very good torps. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't quite keep them tight enough. Um, but you can see that by smoking up here, um, and as long as I have somebody spotting for me, this is a good play. Um, if I didn't have somebody spotting for me and that Otlin would have gone dark as soon as I smoked up, basically if nobody was around close to me, uh, that would have probably been a bad play because he would have gotten a few extra shots on me and my team wouldn't have been able to shoot him all that easily. That's kind of the the main thing. When you get into these gunfights with destroyers, you don't want to uh, let the enemy DD go dark especially if you got a lot of health, and assuming your teammates are going to uh, help you with the fight. Our Yugumo is actually playing this very well right now. He's going and pushing in because, obviously, Yugumo has crazy good detection, and he's uh, allowing us and our team to kill the Oster, which is very, very, very good that we get a DD out because they have an incredibly strong destroyer. The Vampire uh, on the enemy team is... It's an overpowered test ship, basically. It has to get a nerf, otherwise... I don't know how it's going to be added to the game in a reasonable way. Um, essentially what it is, it's a daring, but it has, I think at best, 1.9 or 1.8 second reload. Uh, where daring at its best gets around to 2.5 or 2.3 second reload on its guns. So, yeah, pretty crazy uh, DPM boost. It also gets, a, I believe, a 5 kilometer hydro. I don't actually know these statistics off the uh, top of my head. But regardless, it's a very strong destroyer. Um... So we do want to kill as many destroyers as possible and then hopefully gang up on the, the vampire to kill him. Um, this Kerr first is likely turning out here. Um, he can't push into this. If he, if he pushes in, he dies. And if he turns out, well, our torps are going to kill him. That's the thing you often want to consider with torpedoes is what is the ship most likely to do? Well, if he turns out here, we want to punish him for that. Um, if he doesn't, he dies anyway. So the end goal is to get the ship off the board. So putting a set of torps directly at him here would have been a bad play, simply because you're trying to kill the ship. If he stays bow in like that, he's going to die to our team. There's just so many people here. Um, so we want to position our torpedoes in such a way that they're going to really, really punish the uh, Kerr first if he tries to get away. And that's what we do. So we hit quite a few. We're already up to 120k damage. Uh, pretty solid results so far. Unfortunately, our entire team is in this corner, and it doesn't look like they're really all that interested in uh, in pushing in. As you can see, we got a lot of battleships near the back line. So what do you do in this situation as a DD? Well, you got to go get the cap. Uh, we can't get down on three caps. That's just not going to happen. Uh, you'll, you'll lose guaranteed. So that's where I'm going. Um... It's, it is important to be spotting still, so that's why I'm going to try and stay in as open water as possible, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, um, 
just sit behind one of these islands, for example. We know the Daring is around here because we see him shooting. Um, it's got a little bit lucky with the torpedoes here um, because we did slow down slightly to drop our torps. Now, the torps I did drop were really bad. I wasn't really thinking. Um, it's pretty obvious, I think, that the Kerfirst and the Montana and the Zhao are all going to turn around and head back to that big giant island on GH7 and 8. Um, predicting what people do is the biggest thing you have to learn with these uh, torpedoes. And honestly, I've found that I've gotten way better with torpedoes over the years simply through playing other classes. Uh, all the battleship games I've played actually have helped me a ton in uh, predicting what battleships are most likely to do. Um, here we got to be careful because it's possible the Daring torped our Georgia, so we don't want to necessarily uh, get involved with that. Doing a little blind fire here. Unfortunately, their uh, destroyer is going to be spotting us for a second, but it doesn't hurt to blind fire an enemy DD and smoke like this. Um, they're probably going to be trying to farm your team out from there, and any little bit of damage you can get on these guys is a really good thing. You can see we're hitting a reasonable number of shells even. Um, he, you know, and it's enough to make him even stop shooting. Hopefully our George is able to live. Um, it's unlikely though, he's pretty far in and unable to do much. So we got the cap now. And what is the biggest threat here? Well, the biggest threat is the people pushing around the opposite flank and the people pushing through the middle. So we're gonna deal with the middle first because um, if we allow the enemy team to get three quarters of the map controlled, uh, it's just game over. Right? At this point, it's a pretty close game. As long as our team plays safe on our flank that we're on right now, um, it can be okay. Uh, especially if our Thunder, for example, comes back and helps to farm out the guys on the enemy team that are pushing. That's kind of the way we win this game. We do have to be careful. Um, we don't really know where the Vampire is. We know he was spotted last on the two line there, but we do have to be really careful. So. This play I'm making here is a risky one because I'm limiting my options to uh, to maneuver by going into these islands, but the Daring's running away, and I do have a smoke screen that I could pop in a very big emergency. So that's why it's okay to play a little more aggressively here because I do have that smoke. Um, Vampire does have a five kilometer hydro, so he could probably, I think, I think. I don't actually know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's what the case. Um, so he could rush me, so we gotta be a little bit careful of that. But getting into this position is really strong because it's really easy to hit torpedoes on battleships when you're six kilometers away from them, especially with the uh, kind of crazy buffs that torpedoes have gotten in speed. Uh, back in the day, you had to get uh, you had to get take um, eight kilometer Shimakaze torps to, and then make them. I believe it was. Uh, they went down to 6.3 or something like that with torpedo acceleration to get like close to 80 knots. Um, but now, Gearing gets 73-ish knot torpedoes that go 16 kilometers. So the speeds have definitely increased with torpedoes. They've gotten far better than they used to be in back in the day. And you can see just how easy it is to, uh, to land all these torpedoes on people. We're already well over 10 hits on our torps and uh, quite a bit of damage so far. So we did a pretty decent job of killing this Lepanto here. Hopefully our team can get it. Very nice. And our Georgia did die. So this is looking like an okay game right now. Unfortunately, my team's about to throw. <laughs> um, yeah, they're going to push too hard into kiting ships is basically what's going to happen. I spend a little bit too much time here thinking I'll farm with the Baltimore. I think in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, this game is going to be a reasonably easy win. That's what I think, because the enemy team is so far out of position, half their forces are on the 1-2 line-ish area still, and uh, we should just clean up this flank easily and win the game, right? Um, well, no, that's not exactly what's about to happen. Um, what I should be doing in right now is I should be relocating already to the sea line, and I should be getting ready to stop the enemy from pushing. But instead, I am, uh, I am not... I'm not going there yet. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I'll spot some things here. Maybe we can kill the Daring. But I realize the Daring is probably just going to run away. He'll be able to smoke. And my team isn't going to be able to uh, kill him all that easily when he's just going to tuck me in behind that island. Uh, he's not really in a good enough position to to ambush, basically. He's, he's, playing, he's playing his position very well um, because it's going to be very difficult to deal with him. So 
Now I'm starting to realize what's happening. Now that uh, some of their ships are getting spotted on the other flank, we briefly spot had the vampire spotted in the middle, and I realize, oh, this is going to be a loss because my team is all stuck in these islands here. Um, and if that daring does his job and just spots people, uh, they're caught in a crossfire. So that's a really, really bad thing. And my misplay this game was simply that I didn't uh, relocate to the northern flank soon enough. I needed to deal with these ships that are pushing. Like I said earlier, Gearing is a great destroyer at stopping a push. And um, I needed to recognize that sooner. So something for me to learn for next game is definitely to uh, relocate a little bit sooner and recognize where the enemy team is going to be pushing. But that's not to say we played badly this game. I think I've played, I played this game very well. Um, you know, you just can't win every game. That's, that's all there is to it. You know, you do need help to win a game. So I really enjoy the gearing. Um, I don't know why, but I think it's just got a great combination of everything. Uh, the guns are decent. The torps are amazing. You get good concealment. You get smokes that are very, um, good utility. Uh, they're excellent to use in something like uh, ranked or clan battles, that kind of thing. Saving your teammates, smoking your teammates up, that kind of thing, and then going and spotting for them. You can see I'm trying to get a bit of chip damage on the vampire while we can, because it's going to be really hard for me to deal with him because of his gun power. And at this point, I'm kind of concerned about a loss because the enemy team is just in a way better position than we are. Uh, for whatever reason, our Holland is chasing on the J line, so that he's not being the most helpful. Um, if he was screening torpedoes and spotting in front of our Bismarck and Otago, maybe that would be a better, uh, use of his time, perhaps. Um, but we're going to try and stop this push into the B-cap, but it's very difficult to stop the enemy team once they've gotten to this B-cap, because this island in B is so strong. Um, if I go north, I can't torp anybody who sits on the southern side of the B-cap, so I kind of have to sit in this weird little angle here. Um, and, you know, try and torp some things. Um, I'm a little worried about torping my Amagi friend, but I'm assuming he's not going to go in too hard. And then we just start shooting. There's no real threat of being shot at here, so we don't even need to smoke up. Um, just a few secondaries. I could aim a little better for the superstructure, that kind of thing. So decision making is the biggest thing with gearing. You need to recognize where the enemy push is happening and go there. To support it. Sometimes that's not the right play. Sometimes you do need to be the destroyer leading the charge, screening for your team. That is definitely the case sometimes. Um, I had hoped that our uh, our Holland would have done that um, down in the south, but that was not the case this game. And uh, yeah, I think I think I played these reasonably well. And destroyers are fun because you're, it's all about decision making. You'll notice that there's very been basically zero RNG this game. Um, it's been simply my decision making, um, getting myself damage and helping my team win. That is it. And so if you're someone who's frustrated with battleships, for example, even cruisers, you know, you you have to deal with uh, uh, fire RNG and battleships randomly hitting you for you know a citadel, even though you're angled, that kind of thing. It's really frustrating. So if you're kind of tired of that whole RNG type stuff, it is um, it is a lot of fun to play destroyers. Um, not all the time, because obviously there's carrier games, and you do have to play a lot safer when there's a carrier in the game. Um, that's where I have, I think I had a video on my channel talking about that, but basically my recommendation is that you play around eight kilometers away from a really strong AA ship. So when you see the enemy CV come out with rocket planes, that you can go run back to your AA ship. And uh, it's less likely he's gonna try and uh, find you next to an AA ship. You obviously keep your AA turned off, and uh, hopefully hopefully he doesn't find you next to the AA ship. That's pretty much how I play destroyers. When there's a CV in the game, there's less freedom to move around. But uh, it's, it's still a lot of fun, because it is all about your decision-making. It's less about uh, decision-making and then some RNG. Here I definitely make a mistake. I see the two uh, Albemarles pushing, um, and yeah, we eat a huge salvo. But it was important that we do this turn. Uh, I didn't torp him particularly well. I should have torped him to turn in, because that's obviously what he's going to do. So I just got to run away now. Um, my hope was that I could stall B a little bit. Um, but that's not going to be the case. The Albemarle is going to get in, and uh, yeah, he's pushing me out. You'll see that most of my team actually ended up dying in the B-cap, 
And I should have predicted that would happen with the crossfire the enemy team had set up. So the 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 lesson from this game is to go to the uh, enemy's strong flank and try and stop them from pushing. Because if they get control of three quarters of the map, they're probably going to win. And that's why I get so frustrated when people say, oh, go A, B, you know, on you know a triple cap map where there's A, B, and C. You know, where they willingly give up an entire flank. Um, that usually happens like this, where you give up three quarters of the map, and then the enemy team just kills you in a crossfire. It's not pretty, and uh, giving up a whole side of the map only works if you're coordinated enough and dedicated enough to push in really hard on your strong flank and overwhelm the enemy there. That's the only time it works. Because if you're not willing to push, it's just going to end poorly for you, um, like this game did. Um, we didn't really have all that much help um, this game, though, either. Uh, you'll see that on the score screen. Um, we we were definitely the hard carry of our team in this one. Um, Gearing's a great ship for that, honestly. It is a really fun ship to play. And uh, if you're looking to get into destroyers, it's a great balance of uh, a lot of different DD characteristics. And there you go. Nearly double second place on our team in base XP. So kind of crazy. And uh, yeah, you can't win them all. That's for sure. So I'll show you how I've built the captain real quick. And uh, yeah, that'll be the gearing. So the way I enjoy playing my gearing is definitely torpedoes. Um, I'll show you the, uh, the modules first. You can see torpedo... Tubes mod 2, getting the reload down. Concealment, pretty standard. Repulsion mod, this allows you to dodge torpedoes a little bit easier. Torpedo tubes mod 1, getting the speed up is very nice. Um, engine room, I mean, these are pretty standard uh, skills for destroyers for sure. You'll notice I'm also running defensive AA. Um, that's to just help out when I do get caught out by a, by a carrier. Um, it doesn't really do all that much, I'll be honest, but it's something. <laughs> it's at least something I can do, you know? And then here is the captain, at least for a 19-pointer so far. So, um, preventative maintenance, first skill, last stand, second skill. Um, you'll notice I'm running fill the tube, so better reload again. Uh, adrenaline rush, better reload. And, uh, survivability expert getting us up to a reasonable 23.4k. This allows you to survive a lot more, um... It's, it's really is really good on a destroyer. Uh, concealment expert, pretty standard, obviously. Now, for the next skill, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but it's probably going to look like Superintendent to give me an extra smoke. That'll allow me to play a little more aggressive, use my smokes a little bit more liberally. Um, but it's possible running something like main battery and AA specialist would be okay, giving us 5% better reload on our main guns. You know, that takes it down to 2.8 seconds instead of 3. But... Uh, I think the utility is probably just going to be the way I'll go, because you'll notice I'm not trying to get in prolonged gunfights. I'm trying to take gunfights when it's to my advantage. Um, that's really my goal with this ship. If I wanted to play a gunboat destroyer, really, I'm playing a Grozovoy, a Kaba, maybe a Z-52, a Daring, Kleber, Marceau, that kind of thing. Small end as well. So this one I have a lot more fun playing is that more tactical uh, map control, torpedoing... Um, DD. It's a lot of fun to play like that. So thank you all for watching and uh, I hope you have a great day.